Hi guys, I hope you are going to see me very soon. It's Finnevar here from my studio and <laughs> in my home. We are going to talk a little bit about ha, mica powders. We will have mica powders hackers video. You know, sometimes it's good to know what you are going to do with your product. So I was thinking I will try to give you some advices, some ideas what you can do with mica powders. I have a set of mica powders here and I will show you two or three fun techniques. So hopefully you're going to get inspired. So this is of course a small set of colors. We have much, much more, but um, it's going to be enough to um, show you everything you'd like to have. So, well, I just wait a little bit to see you, you know, to see you here. Hi everyone, hi Shami, hi. Um, we've got Kari, who's going to help you a little bit, and here's my husband, who's going to be the operator of it all, <laughs> right? And uh, we are going to start in a moment. So I'm just handing that to the right person, the smooth operator, and let me talk to you a little bit first. So this is the set of mica powders. We have six colors here, and um, I hope you know um, you will be inspired by them. Of course, mica is something absolutely natural and not absolutely uh, neutral. So you can use it in many ways just by adding it to different um, in, uh, different mediums, different products. You can sprinkle it as it is. It's super beautiful and shiny. It has. Are just this amazing finish that catches the light. It's just a metallic powder, but you can use it in cool ways. And today I would like to show you uh, some ideas how uh, um, use your mica powder in a creative way. So first of all, there is really cool hack about mica. Uh, you can use it to create paint or metallic gesso. So. First question is, why do you need metallic gesso? Some people think like, um, well, gesso should be just a primer, so it should be something that is helping you create a nice matte surface. But what if you would like to have matte surface, for example, for your journal page, right? I have two pages here. This one is covered with gold gesso, and this one is covered with metallic paint, just to compare. So um, if I will be putting some next layers on this side, it should be having this nice matte finish. If I will be putting it here, acrylic paints, especially metallic ones, they are a little bit glossy, a little bit uh, slippery. So just to show you how it works, let me take a pencil, All right? And I would like to make a flower here, right? And this is not going that easy. I would like to sketch something. Yeah, you can see how shiny it is, right? Trying hard doesn't cover that great, right? Here, the same effect easily without any problem. So what happens with gesso, it doesn't matter if it's metallic or traditional white or black. It is just a perfect way to use other mediums on the top, paints, pencils, crayons, whatever you have. So the same pencil, on the acrylic paint and on hmm, gold gesso. How you can do the um, make, make um, gesso like that for yourself? It's very, very simple and I would like to show you how you can do it. So you need color of your choice, right? I was working with gold, thinking it's going to be a really cool idea. Then you need something like a container. And then I'm going to use clear gesso as a base. This is one for my art basics. You can see it in a big tube. This is uh, sold, um, for example, at Michael's in the United States. This is a big tube or very uh, popular jar, 250 milliliters of clear gesso. This looks um, quite creamy and white, but uh, after drying, it turns matte and transparent. So I'm going to use it as a base and I'm going to add color to it. So I'm putting mica inside of my clear gesso and I take a scoop or two. Right? I just don't need that much because I have my paint gesso already, but just to show you how it works. Okay, I'm going to be not very patient. 
<laughs> Me. <laughs> it's just clumsiness. That happens all the time. Okay, so I put a bit of my mica. I want to have it saturated. Alright, so I'm trying to see how it works. I'm mixing my mica inside of the clear gesso. Yeah. Uh, absolutely simple. Anybody can do that. Right? And I have it ready to go. So if I will now open another page of my journal, and I would like to prime it with golden color, no problem. I have nice covering gesso in metallic finish, which after drying with the heat gun is going to turn into nice <laughs> matte finish of, um, of the page. But this is not the end. You can use, of course, your uh, metallic gesso as a base. For well, uh, here we are again. <laughs> Let's start again. We had some unusual situation when we just couldn't. I don't think it works. Oh yeah. Hello Sandra. So I have to wait for you to join. I'm sorry. This is just um, a bit of technical problem. I guess we lost you. So I will just wait. We are going to start from the point when we finished. We are at the point of making metallic gesso in golden color. Thank you so much for your patience. Sorry. It happens. It happens. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> well, as you remember, I'm in the middle of Irish nowhere, so sometimes we have problems with our internet connection. I think it was that, so uh, my apologies. Yeah, we are going to work on the mix of the clear gesso with golden mica powder. Right, I was showing you this. Right, this is golden gesso versus metallic paint. Yeah. Well, the plan was good. However, we lost people. <laughs> oh, hello from Sweden. Yes, we blame the internet in Ireland. Uh, we are a beautiful country, but we have um, a little bit of the issues here with the internet sometimes. So please forgive us. Okay, I'm handing that again to my operator. And let me explain again what we are doing. This is the box that I was decorating before. This is just metal tin. Right. I started painting that with metallic golden gesso I made myself. So as I was trying to explain, to create golden gesso, something that you may uh, think it's kind of fun idea to have, uh, you can use very simple products. So I was showing you, you can use clear gesso. Art Basics clear gesso from Finavar, very useful product, something that you can easily um, use as invisible barrier between uh, your surface and the next layer. So for example, if you're working on the, your journal pages and you would like to see the beauty of the paper that you are working on, for example, maybe vintage book or maybe scrapbooking paper, this is going to be your invisible barrier protection and isolation. The next ingredient is mica powder. Mica powder, one of my art ingredients, and these are the ones that you can buy in the big jars, right? Or in a small uh, s containers like this. They come in a set of six big jars. Just to remind you, look like that. This is uh, gold mica powder that I used for creating my golden gesso. So again, let me show you how you can do it easily. I, you know, you need some container. Of course, then you need a scoop or two of your clear gesso to start. This is the base. And then you are adding the beautiful shiny ingredient, so the mica powder. And you mix it just as it is. And after mixing it in, you can use it to paint on the top of many things. For example, the pages in your journal. I started here. You can see it is already turning matte how covering this gesso is. It's just like beautiful, a little bit like vintage gold color. This was 
um, the color of the mica that uh, we have in the container and then you can use your heat gun on the top and very easily it's going to turn permanent okay. and so on and so on so we get to the point when you can get <laughs> to the look on the gesso when your pencil is going to draw very easily your crayon whatever you have on your table you can add color without a problem so pencils crayons paints inks are going to stick better this side was painted with metallic acrylic paint right so drawing on this side is much harder it is not giving you that great way of covering this is just too slippery this is great paint to do uh, some metallic finishes it was not really meant to be as uh, surface to work on that much it is more like finishing paint so once we have our mix done we can use it for example to cover embellished box this is the the box i was showing you you can use your um gesso to prime everything before adding color so what i was doing i was taking a brush and then i was putting one two coats of the gesso on the top of my metal tin right so every embellishment that i had here it was some of my mechanicals uh, zipper flower some pebbles it was all made from elements like that right these were the elements that I was using and they were absolutely slippery not very easy to work on and I have everything covered in the clear with a clear <laughs> gesso and mica mix now so if I would like to paint on the top of that I can do some of the cool things first of all I can make another mica hack I can use my mica as a paint and this is going to stick to it very easily you can use the combination of soft gel and mica. Soft gel and mica is going to be more like cousin of acrylic paint. So if you are going to put it together and paint, you can create effects just like uh, you would do with acrylic paints. So I'm going to use my soft gel. This is glossy liquid gel medium. And I'm going to take this teal color, which is going to be a bit like patina. And very quickly, I'm going to make a bit of paint for you. Mm -hmm. yeah. I have a bit of my mica powder. Ta -da. And then I take one of the brushes again, <laughs> trying to find the clean one. This is the one I was using for gold. Right, And I'm putting a sc small scoop of soft gel into my mica. This is liquid gel medium, very, very sticky. Now I have something that is going to be very similar to metallic paint. This paint is going to be permanent after drying, so you don't have to worry that um, it's going to come off. And now you can use it for dry brushing on your project or just simply playing with different effects. So let me start it a little bit. I'm going to put it in the depths of my project here and there. Right? That's one of the ideas I have. I'm going to put it here and there and then I'm going to spray some water to make it run. And because soft gel is liquid uh, gel medium and it's sticky this is going to be permanent finish so as long as the gel is wet you can water it down a little bit and add the finishing touches just using paint made of mica and soft gel and then some water of course, before I will do anything else, I have to dry it because without drying, it's going to be hard to add any other things. Right? So you have to be a little bit patient now. Maybe inside here too. So I'm using my heat gun. Mm 
you can see how beautifully shiny it is it's sticking nicely in the details very easily it's almost like patina effect but with a bit of shine in it Getting some of the water out to make it faster. Okay. So these are two hacks in one now. Clear gesso with mica powders to create metallic gesso and mica powders with soft gel to create metallic paint very simple very fun to do and you just you know you can play with water to water it down um other way of using the same paint as we made here on the side is dry brushing so i'm going to take the flat brush i'm going to pick this paint a little bit dry brushing means you just have a tiny bit on your brush right not too much and then you are just touching the tops of your project like i'm doing now Right? trying to show the details. So dry brushing is the technique you can do with acrylic paints, with this uh, paint that we created now, but also, of course, with waxes. In fact, waxes are probably the easiest um, mediums to use if you would like to add some uh, finish that is similar to dry brushing. So you can see what I'm doing, just picking a tiny bit of mix of soft gel and mica powder right and using that as a paint like patina effect paint to dry brush on the top of my project so that would be very very cool way that works of course on any gesso here we had a metallic gesso hack because i wanted you to show how you can use clear gesso for mixing with mica and soft gel uh, to mix with mica, but it will work beautifully on black gesso, it will work just great on white gesso. And remember, if you really like metallic effects, mica powders, they shine the most beautifully on black gesso. The dark surfaces make it really visible, they make it really pop. So, uh, you can put almost anything on um, on your uh, surface as a base, as long as it's matte, it's going to be very easy to work on it. So any kind of gesso and then metallic finish. The last idea I wanted you to show today with the micas, it's, you know, once you have your uh, surface ready, once you have your gessos ready, um, you can use your mica as a spray. If you have an empty bottle, instead of my playing with permanent finish. You can put mica inside of the water bottle and spray. And, you know, people ask about the proportion, how to do it right. It's not that complicated, really. It's up to you. It's better put a little bit less than not too, uh, than too much, because sometimes some of the bottles will clog. So I would say I'm putting two scoops like this. All right. What you have to remember, this is finishing uh, finishing uh, touch and it's not going to be permanent because there's no binder here so if you'd like to make it really permanent it's a good idea to spray some uh, fixative or hairspray on the top so this way you get a very nice spray to add on your surfaces and again this spray will be more visible on the darker surface than on the light surface so if you're going to spray on the black it's going to be very very visible it's going to show the details beautifully and if you spray on the light it's not going to be that visible just to show you on the lighter surface here that is how mica spray is going to uh, uh, used uh, of course 
Mica can be just used as it is. If you like to brush it on the top of something, you can. Just remember to use the dry brush so you're not going to have it sticking to you. And um, after application, it's good to seal it with something. So I would again recommend some sprays, uh, like fixative or maybe even the hairspray. Uh, but um, it's really very easy to make it stay in the places Mica is great for filling the empty spaces. If you have crackle effect, if you have some detailed uh, projects, Mica will stay nicely with all these little places. So you can just brush it di directly on it. So just to remind you, we have here <laughs> metallic gesso, sorry, just to show you, gesso, gold gesso that I made myself from clear gesso and golden mica powder, right? Very simple. And then we have metallic paint it was a color that was called teal and soft gel that was the base to mix it so we have permanent finish on the top of the um, uh, metallic gesso you can play with, uh, with many many um, techniques really using that you just think about using stencil if you'd like to create effect you know, you can play with stencils maybe a little bit and then go with your gesso through that. Yeah, this is just this metallic gesso uh, through the stencil. It will dry as you can see it. It's going to have a little bit of texture. Uh, you can <laughs> you can use it on, uh, on your journal page as I was trying to give you an advice or as a background of your collage. So I hope that is inspiring. And just to show you one more thing, uh, you can also add finishing to it using waxes if you would like to. This is beautifully matte finish. We have uh, metallic paint, but if you prefer using waxes, I mentioned these, it would be very easy to rub it on. I just took the silver color, old silver. I use it a bit and, and I'm going to rub it. I always put it on my hand before, so it's like a little palette and then if I would like to change the tones of my project here and there, you can see how easy it is to work on the gesso. Gesso is really your best friend and it doesn't matter if it's white, black or clear, it just helps all the other finishes stay on the top. So it's better really to spend some time on priming your project, especially if you're working on the um, effects that are build out of different elements like you are mixing wood and plastic and metal and then once it is primed you are going to be having easier time and it will be so much effective to add your paints or waxes or inks on the top sometimes you are struggling just because you don't have your surface ready and you know gesso is really your best friend it's one of the cheapest art supplies so it's good to have one pot of gesso on your table. And if you prefer white, it's great. If you prefer black, it's great. I'm a huge fan of the clear one because it is giving you so many possibilities. So yeah, I hope that was inspiring. <laughs> that is um, my short video about mica powders hacks. So just to remind you what we have here again, this is a mix of clear gesso and mica powder to create metallic uh, gesso then there is a mix of mica powder and soft gel to create metallic paint and finally we were uh, making even a little bit of mica spray if you would like to use it on something so um well if there are any questions <laughs> I will try to answer later, of course. Thank you so much for joining me in my studio. And I, I'm sorry again for the uh, little problem we had with the internet. This is um, my creation I made for you today. Very, very cool uh, idea how you can make your own metallic gesso, how you can make your own metallic paint. And, you know, anybody can do it. It just takes, as you could see, one minute to mix and then apply and dry. Very nice matte finish. So, uh, well, I hope you enjoyed. 
please, if you are inspired by mica powders, tell your friends because they're really, really cool, versatile products. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about them, I can only recommend going to my website, which is finevar.com. And then on the top bar, the last tab is called video tutorials. And there will be really good video on using iridescent mica powders and uh, metallic mica powders. Many techniques. Um, for example, the mix with the soft gel, you, will go, you can see it again. And there will be other ideas, including embossing and um, spraying. So you will be able to see mica in action. It's one of the coolest uh, ingredients that you can put on your projects, really. So I hope you will uh, try these techniques at home and you'll get inspired. It's good to know what to do with your mica powders because they're really uh, very versatile. The possibilities are endless. Thank you so much. It was lovely to see you guys and I hope to see you soon again in my studio or maybe in the classroom.